Tec Philippe is the last independent family-owned Genevan watch manufacturer. Its name is composed of the names of the two founders, Antoine Norbert de Patek and Adrienne Philippe. And this is their story. Patek is born on June the 6th, 1812, in Piaski, a small town in eastern Poland. He is christened Antony Patek. In 1828, just before his 16th birthday, he enlists with the Polish cavalry. He is assigned to the 1st Mounted Rifles Regiment in Warsaw. On January the 25th, 1831, the same deposes Nicholas I and declares Poland's independence. Patek is promoted to sub-lieutenant of the cavalry brigade. Patek is one of more than 10,000 insurgents and many patriots who choose exile. It is the great emigration towards the West, especially into France. Fleeing through the German states, the Polish exiles are supported by refugee committees. In 1832, Patek is in charge of one of these committees in Bamberg. Patek follows the exodus into France. He takes up residence in Cahors and later in Amiens, where he works as a typographer. Quite likely, he lives in Paris as well. In 1833, Patek travels to Switzerland. He officially registers in Versoire in 1835. In 1839, Patek establishes the Patek Chapek manufacture on Quai de Berg 15 as a three-person partnership limited in duration to six years. Also in 1839, Patek weds the niece of Moreau. He is naturalized in Geneva and becomes a citizen of Versoire in 1843. Philippe is born on April 16, 1815 in La Bazoche Gouet in the department ur et loire He notes, a town with 2,400 souls, of whom at least half live in the countryside within a radius of an hour on foot. The father, Monsieur Philippe, a trained and skilled watchmaker, teaches his son the elements on which a sound professional education is based. After completion of his apprenticeship, Philippe asks his father for permission to embark on a Tour de France to improve his occupational outlook. Aged 18 and a half, Philippe leaves his family. Nothing is known about the duration and stations of Philippe's journeyman years, except that he never arrives at Besançon, his original destination, and instead stays in Le Havre for three years. Destiny lures Philippe abroad for the first time in 1836. He accepts a job in London. Endowed with experience, Philippe returns to France in 1839 and settles in Versailles together with a young Swiss with whom he had previously worked in London. The demand for high-quality timepieces is disappointing. Sluggish business encourages Philippe's quest for a truly innovative idea. A royal court watchmaker suggests it would be good to develop a watch without a winding key. That would be a ray of hope. Philippe starts working on the project right away and soon invents a simple and reliable mechanism for which he submits a patent application. In 1844, he presents his winding system at the Paris Industrial Exposition, but it doesn't achieve the breakthrough he had hoped for. In 1863, he publishes his main treatise, Watches with Keyless Works. In 1839, Patek partners with watchmaker Francois Chapek for six years. Apparently, this joint venture doesn't fulfill Patek's ambitious expectations. His encounter with Philippe coincides with the point in time when the partnership is to be renewed or terminated. In 1844, Patek aims to recruit a good watchmaker. He travels to Paris and learns about Philippe's invention at the French Industrial Exposition. Patek invites Philippe to Geneva as a replacement for Chapek. This is the letter that Philippe receives in Paris on April the 9th, 1845. Monsieur, you no doubt received my letter yesterday. Until my previous partner has coped with his new situation, he should be convinced that I am associating myself with one of the most venerable and respected establishments in Paris. No one in Geneva should know who you are. So, for the coachman, 
You are Monsieur Adrien. Disembark at the gates of Geneva and enter the city through the main gate or across the small suspension bridge. Do not pretend to be a voyager. Go directly to Madame Patek, Quai de Berg, number 15, on the first floor, and announce yourself as Monsieur Adrien. Until then, stay in good health, come quickly. I shake your hand. Signed, Patek. Geneva is frequented by many Polish and Russian families that find appeal in Patek's affable and agreeable manners. Philippe is in charge of provisioning the watches that have been ordered, the completion of all watches in the production phase, the creation of new timepiece types, and the pursuit of his invention, the keyless winding works. Philippe had always dreamt of participating in the establishment of a manufacturing operation based on the principle of identical parts and assembly in batches using techniques he had learned in Paris. Patek quickly realizes that the survival of the company depended on his international clientele. Business trips are instrumental in consolidating the reputation of a watch manufacturer. In 1851, Patek and Philippe go to London separately to attend the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations. At the event, Queen Victoria purchases two watches, one for herself and one for Albert. At that time, traveling was risky and uncomfortable. The tribulations of travel are beginning. I should be in London already, but have heard that the vessel was requisitioned by the British government. Instead of 10 days, we were en route for 14 days, and the weather was terrible. I suffered. For the first time in years, I was starving because we were held up in the midst of a forest by the derailed locomotive of an oncoming train. This trip would enable him to increase the number of commissions. He returns home with a reassuring order from Tiffany for 130 watches. Patek arrives in Geneva, afflicted with rheumatism in all extremities. 